नमस्ते सरस्वती देवी घर पानी प्रचारी निर्विशेष शून्य पारी अस्त्याधिशारी श्रीहद्वैकाधारीपाचिको भक्तबिंद जय श्री कृष्णा से कल्याणु नित्यना श्रीहद्वैका श्रीवास देखो भक्ता जय श्री कृष्णा से प्राप्त नित्यना श्रीहद्वैकाधारीवासिको भक्तबिंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 
राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे और प्रेमानंदे हरि बो
ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय So when we were in uh, Johor at the convention, at that time I began speaking about Rupa Goswami's definition of pure devotional service. And we pointed out the different characteristics, the different points which are mentioned there in Rupa Goswami's description or his definition of pure devotion. Anya bila sita shunyam jnana karma jan avritam anu kuyena krishna no shivanam bhakti uttamam. Rupa Goswami in that definition has described how pure devotion should be with specific qualities. It should be free from the influence of the modes of nature. It shouldn't, there shouldn't be any influence of passion and ignorance. It should be performed in a manner which is favorable to Krishna which is pleasing to Krishna and it should be performed continuously also. It shouldn't be on and off, sporadic, but it should be continuous. The jnanis, they desire liberation. So that is also a material desire and that is also rejected. And the, the karmis, the fruit of workers, they are desiring to enjoy the material world. So those things are all rejected in Rupa Goswami's definition. The pure devotional service must be without any desire for fruitive activity or for uh, impersonal liberation. It must be performed simply for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. But not only Lord Krishna, also can be Krishna's incarnations and it can also be Krishna's devotees everything in relation to Krishna. So in this way Rupa Goswami gave a, a very complete description of pure devotional service. So then in his treatise on this topic, which is in his book the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, then Srila Rupa Goswami goes on to describe six characteristics of pure devotional service. And Rupa Goswami points out that pure devotional service can be on different levels. There is sadhana bhakti which means devotional service according to the regulative principles, the different rules and regulations which are applied in the practice of bhakti yoga. And then after sadhana bhakti then there comes bhava bhakti which means 
devotional service in ecstasy. Devotional service in ecstasy means that one is fully engaged in topics of Krishna, chanting the names of Krishna, discussing the topics of Krishna, the different activities and the teachings. One should also be very attached to living in the holy places which are connected with the pastimes of Krishna. So there are different characteristics connected to Bhava Bhakti. And Bhava Bhakti is the seat to another kind of devotional service which is called Prima Bhakti or devotional service in love of God. So there are three different levels recognized in devotional service. Sadhana Bhakti, Bhava Bhakti and Prima Bhakti. Of course, as far as we are concerned, we have to focus on sadhana bhakti. Sadhana bhakti, if it's done properly, then gradually it will lead to bhava bhakti and prema bhakti. But there's no harm to remain on the level of sadhana bhakti. If you're doing sadhana bhakti, you can also be a pure devotee and there are pure devotees who remain on the level of sadhana bhakti. They may never go to the level of bhava bhakti or prema bhakti, but they're fully engaged in Krishna consciousness, practicing the different regulative principles. So pure devotees can be on different levels. They can be sadhakas, they can be on the level of bhava bhakti, and they can be on the level of prema bhakti. And according to the level of devotional service, there are different characteristics which are connected with that particular level of devotion. So Rupa Goswami goes on to discuss the different characteristics of pure devotional service. And he points out there are six characteristics of pure devotional service. On the level of sadhana bhakti, meaning practicing devotion according to the regulated principles, the two characteristics which are associated with that devotion are first of all that one gets relief from all kinds of distress and secondly it is the beginning of all auspiciousness. So we want to uh, discuss about these particular qualities this evening. We want to speak about relief from distress. The, in Sanskrit this is called klesh agni. Klesha meaning Div uh, miseries or difficulties and distress and I'm getting free from them. So pure devotional service can bring immediate relief from all kinds of material distress. Srila Prabhupada introduced Krishna consciousness into the Western world. It was in the 1960s and at that time there was a lot of distress. There's always distress in this material world. 
but particularly in the 1960s there was a there was great turmoil and unrest in the western world and particularly in the USA people were very troubled there was a lot of revolt and up and uprising going on people were protesting the reason of course why they were protesting at that time was because there was a vietnam war going on and the u.s government were recruiting all the young men and sending them off to vietnam to fight a war which they didn't want to be a part of and of course a lot of young men tried to avoid being sent there so it was that was a big cause of distress there were other factors also but that was one of the main causes there in the USA at least so people came to Krishna consciousness in distress Srila Prabhupada came from India to go to the USA. He thought initially that people in the USA were happy. He thought that they were enjoying their Western society. But when he got there, he was surprised to see how much difficulties the people were having with their lives, how they were in so much trouble. So people were very glad to take to Krishna consciousness and to begin the process of bhakti yoga and they could feel immediate benefit from the association with devotees and with the process of bhakti. They felt immediate relief from the pains and the struggles which were there in the material life. So this is important that actually people are in, often in distress everywhere in the world, not just only in countries like the USA, but this whole material creation is a place where there's a lot of distress. <clears throat> the distress, of course, comes from the material body. <clears throat> we have a material body and the material body subject to disease, old age and death. So because of these things, people feel a lot of, a lot of distress how to get relief from that distress. That is achieved by the practice of bhakti yoga, just by taking up the process of devotion, awakening our higher consciousness. The problem is consciousness, that we have become absorbed in the material energy, and because of that consciousness of the material energy, we're experiencing so many difficulties. So the process of devotional service is to change that consciousness from the body to the soul, to bring it to the spiritual platform, awakening spiritual consciousness. Then one can feel immediate change, one can feel the relief from the, the stress and the anxiety which is there in material life. So relief from distress is one of the primary characteristics of devotional service. And the second characteristic is the Devotional service or bhakti is the beginning of all auspiciousness. And we will explain how it is auspicious 
later on. There are other qualities also, for example, Bhakti Yoga, in Bhakti Yoga devotional service, the concept of liberation becomes insignificant, that it has no real meaning to the devotee. And then another characteristic is that it is rarely achieved. It's not such an easy thing. The fifth characteristic is that Bhakti Yoga puts one automatically in transcendental pleasure. We want that. We're looking for pleasure. We want to enjoy. And we can find it automatically by taking part in Bhakti Yoga. And ultimately, the final characteristic, six, there are six characteristics. We say that pure devotional service is the only means by which we can attract Krishna. You want to experience a relationship with Krishna, it's only through Bhakti Yoga that we can do that. So there are these six characteristics, and I was explaining there are three levels of bhakti sadhana, bhava, and prema. Right. So, sadhana means doing your sadhana. Right. We ask the Buddha, how is your sadhana? Or sometimes we will say, I'm having problems with my sadhana. I'm having problems to keep up my practice of the principles of bhakti yoga, my hearing and chanting is not being done properly. I'm having difficulties with my practice of hearing and chanting. This is sadhana based on these things. So sadhana, if we do good sadhana, we will feel the benefit. We will feel relief from distress and we will feel also the beginning of auspiciousness. So, we want to understand how Bhakti Yoga works, how it can give relief from that distress, right? What is the cause of our distress? The cause of distress is and it comes from ignorance. Because of our ignorance, we perform activities which are sinful, which are harmful to our consciousness. So how to get relief from that distress? One way is by the chanting of the holy names of Krishna. Just by chanting of the holy name, even one time, a person can be relieved from all the reactions of a sinful life. Sinful lives. We're engaged in many activities here in this material world. And these activities are often done without proper regard for religious principles. And these, when we don't follow, when we neglect the religious principles, then it brings reactions, sinful reactions. Sinful reactions come upon us and cause us distress. We are suffering. Why are people suffering? Because we have done something wrong. We did something sinful in the past maybe in the past life. It could have been earlier in this life, it could have been even today. But suffering comes upon us as a reaction for different activities which we have done. But there are methods to counteract 
the sinful reactions. Now sometimes people will try to do things like put the fish back in the sea or let the birds go free. You know, some people do like that. They're having bad luck. They'll go to the market, they'll purchase some fish, put them back in the sea or purchase some birds. I, I went to Bado Caves the other day. We were up in the Bato Cave and there were chickens there. Now how did the chickens get there? Hmm? People brought them, right? Some people brought the chickens and put the bird chickens in. Maybe they were, they were thinking initially they'll, they'll eat the chicken, but then they had a change of heart and they decided they bring the chicken to, off to the, to the gods in the cave. They put them up in the cave there, in the Batu cave. That way uh, they avoided the sinful reaction of killing the, the hen or the chickens. So that's one way which may counteract some kind of sin, but it doesn't take away the desire for sin. That is the problem, that we may do something which counters our sinful activities, to, to give some reaction to counter it, but it doesn't stop us from sin. In order to prevent sin, there's only one solution which can prevent us from sinful activities and that is to take up bhakti yoga, to engage in the pra practice of bhakti. Other activities can give temporary relief, doing charity, performing some tapasya, doing some sacrifice. These things can give temporary relief, but they do not stop sinful desire. And so long as there's sinful desire, then sinful activities will take place. And when sinful activities are done, then we get reactions for that. It comes on us. So how can we stop the reactions of the sinful life? One method is by chanting the holy names of Krishna. And it said you can chant just one time can give relief, but that has to be with quality. There is chanting of the holy name and it can be chanting of the holy name may be done in an, in an offensive manner. It may be done mechanically. It may be done without proper attention. Then you will not get the real benefit of the chanting. But if we chant with quality, with feeling from the heart, then that kind of chanting can give us relief from the sinful life, from the reactions of our sin. How to chant with quality? We have to, we have to really want to call the name of Krishna. We have to call with love, with feeling. So this is one way. Other, there are of course other activities by which we can get freed from the reactions of sinful life. Another activity which is done sometimes, it's mentioned that when a person circumambulates Tausi Devi, all the sins which he may have committed are destroyed, even the sin of killing a Brahmana. Now killing a Brahmana, a Brahmana is considered a symbol of the mode of goodness. Brahmana is like almost like a saintly person. And Lord Krishna said, Namo Brahmana Devaya, 
Gobramanya Hidayacha, that the cows and the brahmanas are very dear to him. So why the brahmanas? Because they are dedicated to spiritual practice. They, they have no material desires. A pure brahmana. So the sin of killing a brahmana is very great. But it can be counteracted just by circumambulating the Tosi tree. We have Tosi growing here, you can see Tosis. So Tosi, the Tosi tree is very powerful. It has that power that when we worship her properly, it can destroy sinful reactions. However, if we read Prabhupada's book, Prabhupada describes about how someone may expect to get the mercy from Lord Krishna. And Srila Prabhupada has written there in his book, The Nectar of Devotion, he says, a devotee should not expect immediate relief from the reactions of his past misdeeds. This is an interesting statement because we were just saying that you can get freed immediately by chanting even one time. But now Srila Prabhupada said, a devotee should not expect to get immediate relief from the reactions of his past misdeeds. The devotee should be patient, he should accept that, you know, I'm, I've done wrong, I deserve to get some reaction for it. Prabhupada has also written that he says that a devotee who is not perfectly freed from the resultant actions should therefore continue to act in Krishna consciousness seriously, even though there may be so many impediments. So the po again the point is that just because we're doing devotional service doesn't mean there won't be problems, there won't be difficulties. We may still get reactions, we may get what Prabhupada describes here as impediments, obstructions to our devotional service. But a devotee should go on. Are we really free from all sinful reactions immediately? Or do we gradually become free? So Srila Prabhupada has given us some hints which help us to resolve this question. And it, it was quoted in one class by a senior Prabhupada disciple, His Holiness Giri Raj Swami. He was giving class on this subject from the Nectar of Devotion. And he quoted that Srila Prabhupada said, that when the devotee surrenders to Krishna, Krishna will take charge of the devotee's sinful reactions and use the devotee's sinful reactions for the best benefit of the devotee. So we should understand this statement that Krishna's taking charge of the devotee's sinful reaction, right? We have come to surrender to Krishna and we have some stock of sinful reactions there which we are carrying. But Krishna is going to use these for the benefit of the devotee. It may be that he will give us difficulties, he'll put impediments on our path, he'll give us trouble. That is for our purification, 
That is for our further advancement in Krishna consciousness. So Krishna arranges these things just to help us to progress. In his mind, a devotee may have, he may still keep the remnants of previous sinful activities. In our mind, before we come to Krishna consciousness, we were not aware of different principles to follow and we had certainly the remnants of these sinful things there within us at the time when we come to Krishna consciousness. So Lord Krishna wants to take away these things. He wants to take away that enjoying mood which we have. And he does that by giving his devotees punishments. These punishments may look like sinful reactions. It may look like, oh, I've still got some bad karma, I'm suffering. But we should understand this is the arrangement of Lord Krishna that he's putting us into this situation just to take away our desire to try to enjoy the material world. Although a devotee is surrendered to Krishna's service, until we are completely perfect in Krishna consciousness, we will keep an inclination, we will still have that desire to enjoy the little happiness of this world. Of course that happiness is illusion, it's not real, it's false. But we are thinking there's happiness there. So Krishna wants to take away that kind of consciousness from us. He wants to help us to really clean the heart. So Krishna creates the situation to remove that desire to enjoy. And the difficulties which we go, the, the miseries which we suffer, it's not a karmic reaction. It's Krishna's special mercy just to help the devotee to let go of the material world and to return home back to Godhead. We should understand like that, that a devotee really doesn't have karma, but Krishna's mercy. And that mercy may come in the form of pain, troubles, difficulties, things, unpleasant things happening to us. And why? Just to help us to give up that mentality that we have where we want to enjoy the material world. So this, this special dealing between Krishna and the devotees, this is a kind of transcendental bhava. It's a loving exchange between Krishna and the devotees. And the difficulties which Krishna gives, they're very different from the difficulties which come due to karma. And Prabhupada explains like that in Srimad Bhagavatam. He's saying the tribulations, the troubles which are given by Krishna, they're different from the troubles which come from vicious action. Vicious action meaning just the material energy acting on the devotee. But the devotee who surrendered to Krishna, he's not under the material energy. He's taken shelter of Krishna. So the difficulties which come are Krishna's way 
of purifying us, just to take away any remaining desire to enjoy. Prabhupada writes, he says, Krishna is the cause of difficulties for his devotees in order to increase their devotion. So we have to remember these kind of statements for us. When the difficulties come, then we should think, this is Krishna, he's giving me these difficulties. He wants me to increase my devotion. We should understand devotion, our bhakti should not be static, it's a dynamic thing and it should increase, it should go on increasing more and more. And Krishna arranges for that by putting us into these different difficulties. And of course there's a famous verse in Srimad Bhagavatam, to justify that, tate nukham pam sushamikshamana, Lord Krishna is saying that for one who will wait patiently for my mercy to come upon him, and if he goes on suffering all the difficulties, but he continues to engage in devotional service, then he is qualified to become my unalloyed devotee. Because he's tolerating everything, all the troubles which come, but he never gives up his devotion. And we see examples like that in the Srimad Bhagavatam, for example, uh, Vritasura, wonderful demon, he's actually one, the hero of the Srimad Bhagavatam. He was, he was a great devotee and he was put into the body of a demon. And he was put into a terrible, hor horrifying demonic body. And he, had to, he was fighting the demigods. And Indra, in order to, to fight him, he had to get the bones from the Dichi and he made his, brudge, his thunderbolt weapon and Indra used his thunderbolt weapon. He cut off one arm from Vridasura and then he cut off Vridasura's other arm. But Vridasura kept his devotion. But at the same time he's fighting Indra and he actually swallowed Indra. <laughs> He, opened, he was so big, he was so gigantic, he opened his mouth and he swallowed Indra. But Indra could not be harmed because Indra was protected by the thunderbolt weapon and by the Narayana Kabacha, he was protected, these different things. And Indra, although he was in the body of Vritasura, he cut his way out of the body. Anyway, Vritasura was a devotee. And Indra was fighting him and Indra felt guilty that, that he's a better devotee than Indra was. Indra felt uncomfortable having to fight him because he knew he was a devotee. So that's one example. You have to tolerate so many difficulties. Even you're put in the body of a demon, but you go on with your devotion. And Vritasura was preaching to Indra, he was preaching to the demigods. When the demigods were running away in fear from him, he told them, why are you running away? Come on, you're, you're spirit souls, you can't be killed, why are you worried, you know? He was preaching to them. So Vritasura is an example, somebody in difficulty. We see also, uh, Haridas Thakur being beaten in the marketplace, he didn't complain. He prayed to Lord Chaitanya, he prayed to Krishna, don't let anything bad happen to the people who are beating me. And Lord Jesus Christ, when he was being crucified, he also showed the mood of a Vaishnava. He prayed, Father, forgive them, 
they do not know what they're doing. This is the mood of a devotee, that even though you're in the most uncomfortable, the most difficult, the most painful situation, you tolerate it and you go on with your devotional service. Haridas Thakur went on chanting the holy name. He would not give up the chanting of the holy name. So there, there are of course many examples of the devotees, how they tolerate the difficulties, but go on with their devotion. And in this way, we become qualified to go back to Godhead, to be with Krishna. That we are ready to tolerate all kinds of difficulties, but we will never give up devotional service. When we see the Pandavas, they had to go into exile for so many years. We see Draupadi, her chastity was threatened, but she took shelter of Krishna. So, it's important for us to understand how devotional service gives us relief from sinful life. And just simply by engaging in devotional service, all the different stages of sin can be removed by bhakti yoga. So, tomorrow night we can go on and we will discuss more about the different stages of sinful life. Are there any questions tonight? Um, this description of uh, how Krishna takes away the karma and it's actually he uses this for the benefit of the devotee and therefore it's not really karma but Krishna's mercy. This only applies to pure devotional service only, right? Not for me. Yes. Right. This we're talking about pure devotional service. You doing pure devotional service. Of course, the devotional service, there's some enjoying mentality there. So it's not a hundred percent pure devotion, right? But Krishna wants it to become pure devotion. So Krishna's arranging for it to become pure devotion by putting us into difficulty, by his very special mercy. Hmm. Yeah? I have a question. Um, we also understand from Srimad Bhagavadam that uh, a devotee always thinks that whatever happens to me is due to my own sins and my karma. But at the same time, we also understand one who takes up your emotional service, uh, Krishna, you don't see it as karma for that person, but as Krishna's person. Is this, uh, so when a devotee understands it that it's my karma or you, is this his humility that he doesn't feel that he's qualified in that sense, but actually it's Krishna's person? Yes, that is the humble mood of the devotee. The devotee thinks, I'm very fallen, I'm very sinful, and whatever sufferings are happening it is due to my sinful past, my sinful nature. Therefore, I'm suffering so much. That is the humble mood of a devotee. That a devotee never thinks of himself as being very special, but he always has a, a, a low, the more one is advanced in Krishna consciousness, the more humble he should become. We see uh, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj writes, he says, uh, Jagai Madai, Jagai Madai Haiti Muni Se Papishta, Purushera Kita Haiti Muni Se Lagishta. Krishna Das Kaviraj said, I am more sinful than Jagai and Madhai. 
Jagai and Madhai were emblems of sinful activity. They did everything sinful. But Krishna Das Kaviraj, in his humility, he said, I am more sinful than them. And anyone who utters my name, they will lose all their pious activities. And Prabhupada says, they're not just saying that. They mean it. They feel it genuinely. It's not just an expression, oh, I want to be humble, I want to show people how they actually feel like that. So that humility, that is an important characteristic of surrender. Hmm. As one of the students, what happens if someone practices mixed emotional service continuously? Well, yes, there's always a chance that they can come to pure devotional service. The chance is that they need to get association, they need to get guidance from senior devotees to help them. And they need to hear more. And the more we hear, then we become aware, you know, how what we need to do to improve our own devotion and to help us to get rid of the bad things which we have in our sadhana, how we can progress more in our Krishna consciousness. So hearing is important, hearing regularly. By hearing regularly then we will become more attentive and introspective and will be critical of our own self and that will help us to come to the higher level of devotion. Or it may come externally from association. Krishna mm Maharaj, please accept all the obeisances of the Lord Shri Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, this is a question on behalf of Shankar Dhanaprabhu. He asked to ask online. Um, how would a devotee know which tribulation is karma caused and which is God's mercy? From Shankar Well, Srila Prabhupada did write in the Srimad Bhagavatam, we quoted from Srimad Bhagavatam, he said, the, the tribulations which are caused by the Lord are of a different nature to the, the tribulations which come due to the vicious actions of the material world. The devotee, however, as out of humility, will never think that, oh, this is Krishna's mercy, but he will think this must be due to my karma. Rather, he will think it's his karma. And some, but at the same time, to think Krishna's mercy, yes, it's Krishna's mercy when we are making advancement in Krishna consciousness. If we are making advancement in Krishna consciousness, then that must be due to the mercy of Lord Krishna, that He has put us into the difficulties which help us to progress in Krishna consciousness. If on the other hand the difficulties cause us to feel depression and helpless and miserable and hate everyone, then that is not Krishna, that is not Krishna's mercy. Krishna's mercy is there in the sense that we are advancing in Krishna consciousness. That is the nature of Krishna's mercy, that he wants us to progress, and to increase our Krishna consciousness, to go forward in Krishna consciousness. But if we just become discouraged and give up and hate everyone and hate the world, then that is karma. Um, Guru Maharaj, please accept all my question. Uh, is it correct to think uh, that uh, the Lord will know how to test us? He will not put us in a situation where we will fail it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's wishful thinking. It may be 
maybe we get tested and, and we do see sometimes devo the devotees do fail. It's not that in everything you're going to be successful. But the, the, the success is that we remember Krishna. It's not the results which are important. But it's how much we have taken shelter of Krishna. How much have we surrendered and taken shelter of the Lord. That is more important than the result. The fact that we've tried, that is success in itself. That we made the attempt. The attempt is glorious. Whether you succeed or not, that's up to Krishna. But the fact that you attempted, that is very good. So we have to understand like that. And don't be attached to the results, but be attached to the endeavor that we've tried. We wanted to do something for Krishna. We may not have been successful, but we made the attempt and that is glorious. Okay. I wish every marriage is except my humble businesses. So, in the process of emotional service and developing humility, where do we find joy? We find joy in the attempt of doing bhakti yoga, attempting bhakti yoga. Yes, well, the nature of the soul is joyful. So the more we are conscious of our spiritual identity, we will find joy. That is something which we, we experience ourselves. And certainly chanting Hare Krishna, we find some joy. We get joy coming to see the deities, nicely decorated. We get joy being in the association of devotees, discussing topics of there, there is joy there. And the important thing is to come to the spiritual platform and to appreciate everything in the spiritual sense. And that is joyful. The soul's nature, joyful. Brahma, uh, Brahmanda Brahmiti, uh, how to go? <laughs> that one is Brahma Buddha Prasanatma. One who knows his Brahman is a joyful soul. Prasanatma is a joyful soul. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. So if we are understanding ourselves as Brahman, a spiritual part and parcel, we will be joyful. We will, but joy is not just, you know, it's, it's not just laughing, and, but we must, we can feel the inner pleasure. That pleasure is within and we can feel it. We should not be disturbed by the external. Don't be overwhelmed by the external features. Look within. Find the happiness within. There was a picture of Srila Prabhupada and one devotee said, Srila Prabhupada, you look very, you look very sad there. Prabhupada said, that was a moment of ecstasy. <laughs> so, we cannot judge just by external features. Uh, thank you, uh, Maharaj. Uh, is it presumptuous to, to think that uh, we love uh, Krishna and therefore we are devoted to Krishna? So, love comes first and from love comes devotion and of course the three levels uh, uh, so the first question is, is it presumptuous to think that love, we, we experience love first before devotion? The second question is, if it is so, then how is this love uh, different from Prima Bhakti, where, we, where there is total love of love for Krishna? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, we can have love first. Having love will be the impetus towards service. Some people may not have the mood for service, but they may have some 
appreciation for Krishna. There is a rasa like that, santa rasa. They simply are they're attracted by the opulence of Krishna, but they don't do any service. You see? But people who don't, they may not have any love, they can develop love by serving. Just like sometimes, you know, in the past there was often marriages arranged for people. The young girl would be married to a man, they didn't know each other. And the girl didn't have any love for the husband, didn't have any real feeling. But by serving him, she develops the love. Simply by serving him, she would develop that attachment and love for him. And so the same way with Krishna consciousness, by serving Krishna, by chanting his name, by worshipping him and so we develop that love for Krishna. And the prema, the love of prema, love of God, yes, that is a very, very special love. That's a very high level of love, a very intense love. We don't know what is real love. We have no experience of love on that level of prema. But that level, on the level of prema bhakti, that level is so advanced, one cannot tolerate even separation for a moment from Krishna. The gopis curse Brahma, that Brahma, you're a hopeless creator because you made these eyelids blink and we cannot see Krishna when the eyes are blinking. So you're, you're, you've not done a good job in create that, that is the kind of love which they have, you see that they want to feel Krishna every second, every moment. Hare Krishna. Yes, Mariji Krishna. Maharaj, you mentioned that the nature of the soul is joyful and you even also some examples of very excellent and pure devotees who who suffer it so much actually, but they still they remember Krishna and they carry that to your Jesus. They tolerate suffering. And even Queen Kunti, I think, is also prayed for the difficulties of suffering to remember more Krishna. But it is okay for for us, you know, to imitate, you know, imitate this kind of level, you know, need to, to pray for suffering or to how to help to display, you know, um, or it is correct uh, to have this kind of prayers for ordinary devotees, or we should just focus because also they say we should tolerate happiness also, not only suffering. <laughs> we should focus our mind more into whatever the circumstances it is. We should, how to say, try to remember Krishna or don't forget Krishna means put Krishna in the center in any circumstance. That yes. would be more the, in the correct approach, whatever it is. Yes, yeah, you're right. The important point is to remember Krishna in every situation. Happiness is God sent and suffering is also God sent. And seeing everything coming from Krishna. You know, sometimes they say in India, uh, when I'm rich, I'll think of my money, and when I'm in distress, when I'm, then I'll pray to God. But we should think of God, pray to God all the time, whether you're in with money or without money, whether you're happy or distressed, we should be thankful to Krishna, think of God, take shelter of Krishna. So that is the primary principle, always remember God, never forget Him at every moment. Yeah, yeah. So we have to think like that. Thank you. Yes, any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada ki.